This is the story of how I failed to drown. It's a moment from my childhood that I believe reflects much of the reality of teaching today. And the lesson is a simple one. Failure is your single biggest positive contributor to your future success. In the summer holidays, I had the privilege to go sailing with my grandparents. I'm about 11 years old in this particular summer, and we're moored in Lulworth Cove on the south coast of England. It's a very hot day. I remember it being so hot that we had to wear shoes on the deck because it had been baking in the sun. There's people on the beach around us. There's other boats. We're all about to sit down for lunch. I mean, this is a fantastic place to be. It's one of my fondest memories. And then I noticed the dinghy that we used to go to and from the shore, gently drifting away from the boat. I'm so desperate for my grandparents' approval at this age. My first overwhelming feeling is embarrassment, and I jump to my feet. And I start to move towards the back of the boat. And the whole time, I'm apologizing. I'm saying, I'll tie a better knot next time. I'll make sure that I do it better. I won't be more than a few minutes. I'll bring the boat back. It'll be fine. This is very unusual behavior for me at 11 years old. Not because I acted quickly. Not because I apologized. Not because I had learned my lesson or I wanted to do better next time. It's unusual for behavior for me at that age because I could still barely swim. And as I begin to climb into the water and realize the error of my ways, I mean, my 11-year-old mind starts to wonder. I'm thinking, are there sharks in the Solent? As with so many endeavors born of the best intentions, actually, I haven't considered my actions strongly enough. And I haven't seen the unforeseen failures that are already working against me. As I start swimming, the tide in the bay is washing me out into the Solent. I'm swimming against it. The dinghy is being blown gently across the water by the wind rushing over my head. I'm never going to catch it. Meanwhile, my grandmother is filming this glorious family drowning. <laughs> and there's a moment in the footage where I wave back to the boat. I can't swim anymore. My grandfather replies, what do you mean you can't swim anymore? I can't glug, 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 swim anymore. My grandfather jumps into the water. He swims to me. He puts me on his back. He swims to the dinghy. He ties the rope around his waist. And he swims us both back to safety. I'm not sure I could ever forgive my grandmother, because this whole time, she's still filming. That is until I find out my grandfather actually asked her to continue before he jumped in to save me. There's a lot of lessons about failure to be learned from this experience. Do it once and do it right. If I'd have tied a better knot, we wouldn't have had a problem. But it's very hard to see all of the failures that could arise. Have the confidence to fail. Don't be embarrassed into making a, a further bigger mistake. If I'd have turned back to the boat sooner, if I'd admitted I could basically only doggy paddle, I wouldn't have been in danger. And trust the people around you. Sometimes we all need a little bit of help to get there. Accept help if it's offered, and ask for it when you need it. Teaching, frighteningly, shares a lot of these experiences. And I would ask you, how often have you felt as though you're swimming against the tide? that administrative burden rising up in front of you? How often have you felt as though you're drowning, the budget getting ever tighter around you? How often have you felt as though the winds of change are rushing over your head, and all those new ways of doing things and those new ideas are just forever out of reach? And how often have you felt alone? Public and media perception is often very scathing of the profession. But somehow, you all find ways to shine ever brighter. It's incredible. Now, research supports this view. The National Foundation for Education Research found in six months leading up to November last year that 59% of teachers had considered leaving the profession. That's scary enough. 
What's scarier is they're leaving for lower wages, 10% less on average. That tells me there's an enormous failure in that system. There's a big problem there. Now, I can't help you overcome all of those challenges. But I do believe that a change in your perception of that situation could help you get a long way to accomplishing it yourself. I believe that failure is your single biggest ally in overcoming these difficulties, and I can prove it. Because if you spend long enough swimming against the tide, even if you don't get to your destination of failure, you still become a very strong swimmer. And eventually, you will get there. You think about me tying that knot. What would I have learned if I'd have done it better? Let me share some of my professional failures with you. I was working in a small business. And this is about doing it once and doing it right. I'm a few days into a new job. And somebody working for me, very out of character for her, has missed the fact that we have a, a tender due. We've only got four days left to complete that document, but we decide to do it. And you know what? Even with four days left of this big, complicated, challenging document, we do it right. We score 97 out of 100 on that tender. But we still failed. We didn't win the business. And it forced me to look deeper at that situation. Interestingly, the customer had been using the competitor's product for six months before they even went to tender. The document we completed had no purpose other than to, for us to be there. If I'd have done it right the first time and got it right, I wouldn't have learned. And actually, the time I spent with that business ongoing, we never lost another deal because we focused all of our energy on understanding, building, and maintaining relationships with those customers. The next time, perhaps, you're preparing for an inspection, for example, accept the fact that you're going to do it right. You're going to give it the best that you've got. Right? You don't want to fail. And spend your time looking for those unseen failures. That's my lesson there. The second is about having the courage to fail. It's not being embarrassed into a bigger mistake. In one business, I'm bringing a new product to market. And I have to bring in a number of partnerships to support that. One of these people is very enthusiastic. They're very engaged with us. They really want to be involved. And they're on the phone all the time asking but they just won't commit. In sales, you learn to qualify an opportunity in or out very, very early. And so I let that partnership go. Much to the disgust of my business and the embarrassment to me, I decided to stop working with them. A few months later, we find out they're launching a competitive product. The only reason they wanted to partner with me was to drain me of all of the insight that we had available. If I hadn't failed early, I'd have had a bigger failure in the future. Trust the people around you. Sometimes we all need a little bit of help to get there. On one occasion, I'm expecting a senior global influencer to announce a project that I've been working on for a couple of years. A few days before that announcement is due, I call up to check his speech to make sure that everything's going wrong. And I'm literally horrified to realize that I've been usurped. My CEO, my managing director, my chairman are going to that event in a few days to listen to it, and we're not even there. I spend the rest of the day trying to overcome that challenge, trying to make it right, pulling on all of my connections, and I fail miserably. The speech is already with him, and you can't change a speech for that kind of person. In the morning, I have to make a very difficult telephone call to my chairman, and I have to tell him, I failed, I let you down, I'm sorry. He picks up the phone, unusually chipper, and says, morning, Philip. Thanks for calling. I know why. It's all right. I went to dinner with him last night. Notice that you weren't in the speech anymore. Changed all that all around. It'll be absolutely fine. I'm busy. Got to go. Thanks very much. And puts down the phone. You need to have faith in the people around you. He cared enough about me and, of course, the business to go out and check and work on that himself. And let me be clear. You guys work in teaching. You literally have the best team in the world. I've never seen an industry where there are more creative, driven, and daring people around you every single day. Make the most of it. Because collaboration makes us stronger. I think, honestly, I've only ever failed alone. 
thinking back to my story about drowning, two years ago, I'm in Italy with my wife and children. And we're on the beach. My eldest son, who is particularly enthusiastic and adventurous, begins swimming. And he swims too far from the shore. He gets in trouble. He's out of his depth. He's starting to panic. And he's not going to make it back to shore on his own. Thinking back to that day, I was nearly washed away with the dinghy. Do you still think it was a failure that I didn't tie a better knot? Thank you very much. <laughs>